um, really the bane of my existence at the Visitors Bureau, but um, I contacted uh, three Concord trustees, Amy Lucci, Morgan McIntosh, and Carl Darndorfer, asking for their support to defund the Visitors Bureau. The point that I'm trying to make, that I'm not making any accusations that there was anything nefarious going on in the Visitors Bureau. I'm just saying that the citizens demand that uh, any entity, be they a nonprofit, 501c6, or whatever they're called, they're, if they're receiving taxpayer funds, uh, they must be transparent and they should be subject to the Ohio Sunshine Laws, Open Meetings Act, and to the public records request. That is my uh, basic what I am trying to get to. Now, um, Mr. McIntosh. Uh, sent me an email and he said there are a couple reasons why he believed the Concord trustees are unable to take a position regarding this issue. First, uh, he said, I have found, and I'm quoting, I have found little appetite in the commissioner's office to defund the Visitors Bureau. Is that is that correct as it's currently constituted? Speaking for myself, I'll let my colleagues comment. Um, I will say when just a little bit of history. When uh, the Visitors Bureau looked at our appointments as a recommendation, not an appointment, um, I'm looking to legal, the discussion heated up. Um, I had a spirited yet productive conversation with Neil Stein, their executive director. I would say my conversation with uh, their board president, Amy Sabbath, was incredibly productive and candid. It did uh, result in their board expanding rather than staying tight. Being a 501c6, I believe if I understand the requirements, that substantial funding needs to come from their membership, not just government. Uh, by expanding their board, I believe that is going to accomplish that. Uh, I believe they're taking steps in the right direction to be as open as possible. I, I am disappointed by some of the positions as far as their stance, but I, I can see where they've, they've tempered that. They're, they're, uh, they're good partners, but uh, I, I, I too would like to see more. I don't believe there's anything nefarious going on. They've got good people they're serving. They have, uh, I believe they have a plan, and I believe that they're executing that plan reasonably. Uh, but I, 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 I hear what you're saying, and I appreciate your concerns, and I, I think that's something that it's, it bears repeating. So I think I've given you a very long answer to a short question. But yeah, a little history, you know? well, the um, nothing stays, uh, you know, constant. Uh, there's a, there's always changing of personnel, and uh, what I'm also concerned about is that there is uh, there's some uh, quid pro quo that you know, could be going on. That from the standpoint that let's say we're uh, uh, we're supporting the wineries. All right. I th okay. Let's. Uh, I think we need to support the wineries. A big economic dri driver. But what I also don't want to do is I don't want to see any of the wineries, you know, contributing uh, to uh, inordinate amounts to any politician. So that that's a problem. And uh, uh, so I, I, we agree that uh, going back to what. Uh, Mr. McIntosh was saying that there's agreement the commissioners, the Visitors Bureau is conducting good work. That's a, that, that was sort of a, a given with me. Again, the, the whole driver you know, for this thing is that uh, the, the responsibility of the citizens, as, as we see, is to make sure that we are good citizens and then we are checking what is happening with the taxpayer dollars. And we're saying lobbyists for citizens is willing to sit in on meetings held by the Visitors Bureau, but they won't let us. We are willing to uh, do the needful as good citizens to ensure that they are doing exactly what they say they are doing. But when they exclude the citizens from their meetings, it then casts a shadow or doubt that I'm saying we're shining light on that in that darkness. 
Some people say there's no darkness there. I'm saying prove it to us by making by making it a county body that is responsible and accountable to the commissioners because Jeff Ruppel stood right here on this podium and said that they are a self-governing body and any uh, suggestions or uh, commitments by the uh, by the commissioners are mainly just recommendations to that board so you're, you're not you may put three uh, uh, people on their board but you're not in control of anything they're in control of that million dollars plus and i'm trying to get that across to people in the community who say that i am i am mistaken so can i say right now that the commissioners have no control uh are not a, and the visitors bureau is not accountable to the commissioners i'll look to legal but i believe by statute if you want to you're correct in. commissioner um I'll go back to Trustee Mac McIntosh's statement, and he indicated to you that the Board of Commissioners has no appetite for defunding, something like that. Mm -hmm, yeah. It's a matter of law, this board cannot defund the Visitors Bureau. Uh, this is a statute problem, quite frankly, and I've agreed with you in the past, there should be complete transparency of any county monies going to the Visitors Bureau. However, the way the statute is written, this Board of Commissioners, when they, the bed tax is passed, the money collected on that or the portion thereof shall be distributed to the Visitors and Conventions Bureau operating within the county. That's, that's almost verbatim what it says. So this board has no choice. It has to uh, turn and, those monies over. Yeah. As long as the bed tax is in place. And that's, and I, that's one of the distinctions. This board could repeal that. The other is if another Visitors Bureau and Convention were a competing body or they voluntarily chose to fold into being another body, there's, there's a number of mechanisms that would be voluntary and that could be imposed, but kind of like your question about the public records request, you have to ask the question the right way. Mm -hmm. Welcome to government. Right, right. So it makes, uh, makes your head hurt sometimes. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Commissioner Young. Uh, what is the Visitors Bureau's responsibility in reference to open meetings? No. In reference to what, Commissioner? Open meetings. Uh, that's a very good question. They are not considered a public body. Right. In fact, here in Lake County, a lawsuit was filed in Judge mm -hmm. Lucci's room. And Judge Lucci, uh, two defendants were named, this Board of Commissioners and the Visitors Bureau, a different group on the Board of Commissioners at that time and motions to dismiss were filed. One of the claims I believe was the Visitors Bureau was a public body subject to Open Meetings Act and Judge Lucci granted the motions to dismiss. Um, then that case went up to the Court of Appeals and the Court of Appeals affirmed the trial court, Judge Lucci, meaning the court correctly dismissed uh, the case and there was uh, Again, part of the claim was that the Visitors Bureau is a public body op subject to Open Meetings Act, and the 11th District Court didn't agree with that. So that's why the trial court was affirmed. Yeah, that, uh, there should have been a better lawyer on that case, I think. <laughs> well. Uh, All right, boys. <laughs> so the bottom line is uh, it is not a public body, and so they're not subject to Open Meetings Act. Their records are not considered public records query whether they should be so then we forward monies to them on a regular basis the county and how they spend that money is it's strictly up to them there's no um, there's no accounting to the public is that what you're saying they are yes they are a separate corporation under title 17 nonprofit corporation and my personal opinion is we should be able to see how they spend it exactly but that's not how the law is written at this point in time uh, mr hackman if i may ask a question uh, you are you in agreement that if the commissioners folded the current visitors bureau into let's say uh, the, the port authority or into another governmental body i'm not saying 
eliminate any of the people. I'm just saying change the structure away from the 501c6 so that they are uh, then mandated by the Ohio Sunshine Laws that they must allow people into their meetings and subject to the public records. I'm not, I'm not talking about disbanding anything. So are you suggesting somehow pulling the people that are currently in the Visitors Bureau and making them employees of the county? If, if what, you know, whatever, whatever structure seems to make sense so that the million dollars that they're receiving uh, indicates that they are a public body and they, are, they must be held accountable to the Sunshine Laws. That's what I'm trying to do. I, I don't know the actual mechanism that, that makes, it, makes that happen, but uh, I, I would think that that certainly is a possibility because I, I think the commissioners, I, I, if I were sitting in one of those three, three chairs, I, I'd like to be able to know where the money is being spent. Mm -hmm. I will say this. Uh, I think I even made a statement in the past that can be run by the county. I did a little research on that. I'm not exactly convinced of that. So I don't know if they can. So, it's a, so it's, a, it's a definite maybe then, right? Definite okay. maybe. Okay. Now, again, what if a nonprofit starts up and there's two nonprofit visitors bureaus? Not too clear in the law if you can fund only one of them or do you have to fund both? And those are the nuances, but I would say one of the possibilities that had been discussed just as backup plans would be uh, somehow becoming a division of the Port Authority because they do have broad authority. Oh, so that is possible, okay. I, I, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying it was something that was discussed. I, I, I don't wanna, uh, to Mr. Hackman's point, you know, what is the statutory authority? But again, as a 501c6, this board does not have the authority to compel them to do anything. Now, no. could we, I'm reluctant to use the words defund, but could we repeal their funding source? I think the net effect to that would be yes. But that's a, I think that's a nuclear option, and uh, there's, there's other more persuasive things, and I think that's where dialogue and talking things through have been productive. But to your point about openness, uh, that is a legitimate concern and a matter subject for fair debate. Well, thank you, Commissioners. I will use this as an opportunity to uh, continue uh, to shine light Thanks. on the uh, Visitors Bureau, and uh, the people will will know what is happening. And I think you have confirmed what I've been saying for you know for several years now on this Visitors Bureau. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Young. Thank you. Sure said Serino. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Plechnik, <laughs> I'm just so used to Jerry being here. So. <laughs> Mr. President. Which is a hint of how long this discussion has been going on about the Visitors Bureau. So. so Mr. Massey said, if I were a commissioner, I would want to know. And I do want to know. I want to know everything about how our public tax dollars are spent. So firstly, I would say I understand uh, the very legally precise way that Mr. Hackman described public records requests and how sometimes there are no records that are responsive to the request because no one created a record that say lists out precisely how the 359 some odd million dollars are really allocated amongst the various government agencies in Lake County. I think that should exist. So let me say that if in further review the record that Mr. Massey doesn't want does not exist, I personally request that it be created because I need to review it. And then please give a copy to Mr. Massey. I think it's important for us to understand what these accounts consist of in a global way. I think we generally know, but nonetheless having one document that explains it in one place is useful for our understanding as commissioners and for the public's understanding. Thank you. But it's a cop out. And I, and I think Mr. Hackman was ve being very polite. It's a cop out to say, ha ha, no document that is exactly like the document you asked for exists. And it's very easy to respond. No records are responsive to the request. It complies with the law, but it doesn't comply with our obligation to be transparent. So let's take a closer look. Let's see if what Mr. Massey wants is there. If it's not, let's create it so that our commissioners and our public have reference to it. Uh, second, with respect to the Visitors Bureau, I 
uh, share Mr. Hackman and I think my fellow commissioners desire to see more accountability. Uh, the best answer any lawyer ever gave is it depends. And if I'm not mistaken, no county has ever dealt with the issue of competing visitors bureaus or defunding the visitors bureau before. So it is a definite maybe as to what would happen if the commissioners took action to either repeal the bed tax or to create a competing visitors bureau and either give it part or all of the funding. Uh, you know, if Judge Plechnik heard the case, he'd say, yes, the commissioners have this authority. But looking at it from the perspective as a professor or an attorney, I'd say, mm, I'd probably peg it as a better than 50% chance, maybe even a 75, 80% chance that a carefully crafted solution could allow you to defund the Visitors Bureau if you wanted to use that nuclear option. But I'm aware that in the first in the first public records lawsuit that Mr. Hackman described, that uh, uh, the attorney you referenced, that Mr. Massey brought pro se, uh, that it, according to Mr. Rupel, cost the Visitors Bureau about $20,000. So bear in mind how much uh, legal work you put in on your end, it cost them, I think, about $20,000 on theirs. Specifically, 20,000 taxpayer dollars, because as Mr. Massey points out, the Visitors Bureau is largely funded uh, by the bed tax that are paid for by uh, uh, the hotels in this county. So these are tax dollars being spent and lawsuits are unfortunate. I would be remiss to say my first go-to option would be to say let's try something that may or may not work legally but will definitely cause a lawsuit that will definitely result in the Visitors Bureau and the commissioners using taxpayer funded attorneys to duke it out for two to three years. Uh, you were able to bring your suit for free, but if the county brings a lawsuit, if the Visitors Bureau brings a lawsuit, I think it's safe to say tens of thousands of dollars will be spent that would be better spent promoting Lake County businesses and wineries. I don't rule out a nuclear option, walk softly but carry a big stick. I think it's important for everyone to understand that there are checks and balances and that if the Visitors Bureau were to go too far uh, or would be to unwilling to listen to the public and the commissioners that there are things on the table. Uh, but to go there first when it's not 100% clear that the authority is there, I think would be a risk that we would spend a substantial amount of tax dollars litigating who's right. And you know, Mayor Morley said, I say no nonsense. I've been remarkably consistent about this. When the mayor of Willoughby Hills said, I want to sue my city, I said, heck no, you're going to waste taxpayer dollars. And I think it's a bad thing when government agencies are suing one another. It's, it's never a good look because ultimately you're spending taxpayer dollars and nobody wins but the lawyers. The law professor in me is going cha-ching, but <laughs> the, public servant, the public servant in me says we don't want government agencies suing each other if at all possible. Now, in response to President Hammercheck and uh, uh, the commission's push, the Visitors Bureau went back on their initial stance that no members would be appointed by the commission. They were more reasonable. They heard the need for some accountability and in response to the request that we all made at this DS, uh, they allowed us to appoint three of the members as opposed to simply recommend. That's a small step forward as the president said. They've started to work with us. I personally would like to see them voluntarily subject themselves to the sunshine and public records laws. The Ohio Republican Party is one example of an agency that you could argue is public or private and they've dealt with those requests and rather than litigate it they said you know what we should be transparent. It's not about what the law says it's about what we should do and we can also eliminate these legal issues and contests just by saying you know what make a public records request we'll respond to it. I'd like to see the Visitors Bureau voluntarily amend their bylaws to do that because at the end of the day, the Visitors Bureau is all about shining a light on the great things in Lake County. If you or the News Herald or a thousand people want to come to their meeting and hear about how we're the best place to live, work, play, and retire, how we have the best wineries in Madison, which I'm confident, by the way, that elected officials have given a lot more money to the wineries in Lake County than they have given back to them. Let me just say that. I'm confident that we've spent a lot more there uh, than they've ever made in contributions the other way. 
Uh, I think that's a good thing all around, but I would like us to try to push as hard as we can to get there uh, through a conversation rather than a very expensive lawsuit. I don't take anything off the table. And if the Visitors Bureau today were to say, you know, we're going to hire, uh, we're going to hire this random person for a million dollars a year as the wineries are, and that person were then to give, you know, hundred thousand dollar contributions to every countywide elected official, well, that would be very concerning. And I think that nuclear options would need to look, we'd need to look at that in this case. But no one, not even yourself, is alleging uh, that anything was done wrong with the money. What you're saying, and I agree with you, and Mr. Hackman agrees with you, and I think all the commissioners have said they agree with you, more <laughs> transparency would be a good thing. The Visitors Bureau would be operating in an even more strong and community-minded manner if you could sit there, if I could sit there and hear uh, hear all the good work that they're doing. I'll say one more thing. I don't want to disagree with Mr. Hackman. I just want to add to his uh, analysis of your case. Uh, the judge in the appellate decision very artfully <laughs> avoided the question of whether uh, of whether the Visitors Bureau was a public entity. They said they had no need to reach it because what you were referring to was a purely informational meeting. And even a public body like the commissioners can have a purely informational meeting. And I think that there's more incentive for the Visitors Bureau to consider transparency given that someone could turn right around, bring another lawsuit after making a public records request they deny, and say squarely, are you a public entity or not? As you said, if there were a better lawyer who squarely asked the question, and I say better lawyer tongue in cheek because I think for a, a concerned citizen without a law degree, you do pretty well. Thank you. Uh, but if that question were to be squarely asked, if you were to make a public records request to the Visitors Bureau, they denied it, and then you were to go to court, you could even potentially go to the rocket docket in Columbus, uh, pretty recent change to the law that allows you to go to Franklin County and bring a public records lawsuit uh, very inexpensively, very quickly, you could squarely ask the question, are they a public entity or not? And I personally, if I were the judge on that case, I would say yes, they are, because they're principally funded by the county. They do traditionally governmental services to the county and economic development, and they have some members of their board appointed by a government body, a.k.a. the Lake County Commissioners. I think on balance, you look at the factors, they probably are a public entity. But whether they are or not should be beside the point because just as the commissioners are public servants, the members of the Visitors Bureau board are public servants as well, and we should be looking at what's best for the county, not what we can legally get away with. There are plenty of things the commissioners could legally do that would be unwise. There are plenty of things the Visitors Bureau can do that would be unwise but nonetheless legal. And I think it's unwise to close the books because it implies that there's something untoward that they don't want people to see, which I think there's nothing further from the truth. I believe the Visitors Bureau is doing great work for our county. I think they're a good partner to both the Port Authority and the commissioners. And I think that if they open their books fully and allowed you and the News Herald and every, every resident of Lake County to see their meetings, I think they would receive much deserved praise for the good work they're doing. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Plesnick. If I can just add to that, uh, uh, lobbyists for citizens approaches in dealing with any governmental agency or any nonprofit, we make the statement, tell us how we can help you so that you can help the citizens of Lake County. This is not about throwing anybody under the bus, but it's being good uh, citizens and uh, doing our role as citizens to help our governmental officials so that they can continue to do the good work for the people of uh, Lake County. That's all this is really about. Thank you very much. I just would like to. Please, go John, ahead. No, no, go ahead. Sir. Okay, thank you. Um, I hear what everybody's saying, and it, it, it makes perfect sense. Uh, I, I also believe the Visitors Bureau is doing good work, and I won't go into the details, but I've heard a lot from business owners, from private citizens, from other Visitors Bureaus around the state uh, that the type of work we're doing here has really taken a step up over the last year or so. Um, at the same time, though, when it comes to uh, a legal view and how to deal with this organization. It depends, I know you didn't mean it this way, but it, it depends isn't a good enough answer for us. 
Uh, and you agree with that, I'm sure. Um, and so I'd like to ask legal uh, <laughs> to create some sort of a framework for us to deal with this organization, which we all believe is doing a good job. I think we all believe that. And um, we're not unhappy with their performance, uh, fulfilling their uh, major mandate, which is to attract more visitors to Lake County, obviously. Um, in that category, they're doing well. Now, in the category of public relations, just how they're spending the people's money, et cetera, et cetera, it sounds like we have uh, some real problems here. So if we could talk after the meeting today, I, I'd like to know some basic things, like you just prepare you a little bit. If a second nonprofit were to start up in Lake County, what could that mean? Would it mean we'd have to split the monies that we're giving to the Visitors Bureau in half? Would it mean, and now it depends probably, uh, but I'd like to get some idea of just how we might might deal with that. Um, if it comes down to changing the legislation, what would the new legislation look like? We, can, we have a lot of good relationships in Columbus. And, and this appears to be a fairly common sense, straightforward um, argument that we could take down there in reference to, to rewriting legislation. Not with a bias of any sort, against our current Visitors Bureau, but just so we could operate better uh, as a county, keeping track of our funds and uh, controlling our funds. I hate to be in a position where we have to hand out money to any group that's labeled as a Visitors Bureau, any nonprofit. If Maybe I was misunderstanding some of your earlier comments. Um, things like the appointment of board members, that shouldn't be a sort of a, you know, a long-term, you know, I'm not your enemy, I'm your friend, we can work together, give us three more appointments. Uh, it's good we were able to do that, but at the same time, I would think there could be a better clear-cut definition as to how the board members should be appointed. Um, so I want, I'm looking for some kind of um, definitive process as to how we deal with the Visitors Bureau on an ongoing basis and just how we could arrive there. If we would take legislation, obviously that's long term. Maybe it would just take some sort of written agreement with the county and the Visitors Bureau. I'd be glad to talk with you after the meeting, with okay. you individually, Commissioner Young. and. Uh, give you my understanding of what the law is. I'm not a policy. I'm a legal advisor. Uh, I don't make policy, uh, but sure. uh, I'd be happy to have that conversation. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. And just to revisit, Dave, this was part of our discussion at some point in the past. If another nonprofit were to organize and call themselves a Visitors Bureau Convention, we would not be compelled to have to give them funding. They would. They could make a claim. They could ask. Mr. President, can I say this to Mr. Hackman because I know he's going to agree. Repeat after me. It depends. We don't know. That's the problem. It's a, it's a case of first impression. So maybe the commissioners choose which Visitors Bureau is the one true Visitors Bureau. Maybe they both receive funding. It's To my knowledge, it's never happened before. And also, the statute talks in terms of Visitors Bureau singular, yeah. not plural. And the other discussion that had been had in the past was contracting with another county. Other, it doesn't have to be a Lake County body. Other counties do have combined or joint uh, Visitors Bureaus, but I think you're going to find that the Lake County Visitors Bureau and especially the Ashtabula County Visitors Bureau, they're partnering and working very well together and I would call that a force multiplier. It does not address your openness and transparency concern, but I just want to let you know that there are things that are very productive that are taking place. And again, a number of options had been looked at in the past. So just in the interest of getting it all out on the table as much as possible, I wanted to share that as well. So. I believe Faith has a. Oh, yes, ma'am. We're, we're, 
We're good to go. Batter up. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Massey. I will be brief. Well, at least you didn't say you'll be short. <laughs> <laughs> Smarty pants. Okay. I did want to correct Commissioner Professor over there. You know, I love you. But pro se defendants do have to pay filing fees. They don't get to file anything for free. And they don't have the benefit of an attorney's legal mind like yourself. They're winging it. The fact that Mr. Massey filed a pro se, uh, you know, case against anyone or a body of the commissioners, the visitors bureau, and took that on, I think it's courageous because really, in many cases, that's the only option that the uh, the public has is to go into litigation. So. It's not free, and if you lose, which he did, you got to pay attorney's fees for the other side, I think. I don't know. I'm not uh, sure how that happened. Attorneys, if I may, Mr. President. Please, please. Attorney's fees are always a potential. Uh, in our case, we did not ask for attorney's fees, and Judge Lucci, I believe, uh, he found it inappropriate to charge Mr. Massey with attorney's fees. I believe. Visitors Bureau may have, I don't recall. Yeah, they did, on but, appeal. Well, our, our, our office did not, because we discussed it in-house, didn't feel it was appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. The other